Good afternoon, Bunker Hill. Uh, it's good to be with you this Wednesday. I hope this day finds you well and everything is uh, going good for you. Uh, miss being with you personally and uh, uh, hopefully uh, before long this can all change and we'll be back together again. But I appreciate you tuning in and uh, I hope uh, you will uh, write down some of these announcements that I have. Uh, if not, we'll try to keep you uh, posted uh, through text messages and through streaming. Um, in way of announcements, I hope that you received a text about the children's Easter egg uh, hunt. Uh, it will be going on April the 11th uh, uh, at, from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, if you want to participate, um, all you need to do is to print out and color some eggs, uh, pictures, um, and attach them to your mailbox. You can put them in your windows on your door of your house, any way you choose to do that. And the parents will drive by and uh, the children can count the eggs uh, that they find. Uh, if you want to participate, it would be very helpful to us if you could uh, text or either call uh, Ashley and give them your address and your willingness to participate in this so we can allow the kids that opportunity to drive by your house uh, and count the eggs that you have posted outside. Um, in way of other announcements, uh, I, I think we're still under quarantine pretty much and it looks like it's going to get worse uh, before it gets better so just sort of try to stay hunkered down and uh, be safe and uh, i do want to go ahead and remind you of some things uh, on our prayer list and need to be aware of uh, still need to be praying for miss gail hathorn she's still in umc uh, hadn't had any update or any word on her lately uh, but i know that she still needs our prayer also, uh, need to be praying for uh, Miss uh, Marguerite Spike. She's still in the swing bed there at Marion General. And uh, as well as all of those who are ongoing prayer lists, and there are many of those. Uh, remember the Matthew McGrew family uh, and also the Mike Lofton family. Uh, do want to say a special prayer for Fred Herring. He uh, starts his uh, treatments uh, this week and hopefully everything will go well with that. Um, let us go to our Lord in prayer. I hope if you have some unspoken requests you will just go ahead and share those with God as I lead in prayer. Father, we bow in your presence this evening and Lord we thank you again uh, that, you've, uh, that you've allowed us to be here midweek. Father, to just pray and to thank you, Father, for all your multitude of blessings. Even with everything that's going on around us, Father, and things look so bad, Father, you're still good and you're gracious and you're merciful, and we thank you for that. Father, we do pray for all of these who are on our prayer list, those who have uh, special needs, especially those who are in the hospitals right now. And Lord, we do pray for those who've lost loved ones. I pray, Father, that you would comfort them as well. Lord, we do pray uh, for our nation as a whole, for our medical uh, personnel who are uh, really swamped by those who have the virus and other ailments and hospitals. And Father, we do pray a special prayer that, Lord, you'd put an end to this virus. And Father, we'll praise you and thank you for that. Father, I thank you that during this virus time and a time that we, Lord, have restricted our travel, Lord, may we use it to spend more time with you, to get closer to you, Father, to understand truly the love that you have for us. Father, we do pray for all the unspoken requests that so many have. And Lord, I just ask that you bless this time as we come together to study your word for a moment. And Lord, may you get the glory and may the body of Christ be strengthened. And I pray that in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, reading the scriptures a lot, uh, sometimes you, you overlook some really important uh, parts of scripture, not uh, paying attention to it, and then you go back and you look at it again and you begin to read it, and you just think about how great God is to allow us to be children. 
of His through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I began to study in this 1 John chapter 3, the first uh, two verses of 1 John, uh, I realized that John was speaking to us as Christians that there needs to be a real, a real dedication to trying to live a holy and a pure life for Him. Uh, if you read through this letter of John, uh, one thing you're going to notice is John calls for a Christ-like living, for us to, to live a pure and holy life. Uh, John gives some pretty good, uh, powerful reasons for living such a uh, God-centered life. Uh, uh, and this is why John uh, wanted uh, to live his life as purely as he could for the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it's because of the wonder of God's love for John. It should be the same wonder of God's love for us that would cause you and I to want to live better each day, a more holy and more pure life. In 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not been yet revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And in verse 3 it says, And every one who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as he is pure. John was just overwhelmed. He was amazed when he began to consider the love of God. When he considered how much God loves us. So John tried to express it in words the best that he could. And sometimes the words just aren't adequate enough. And I think uh, John tried the best he could to, to describe God's love. I think he had done it, he had already done it in, in uh, John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But here he says, Behold, what manner of love has God bestowed or lavished on us? That word. Uh, bestowed is another word for lavish on us. It's uh, uh, sort of like, I like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But when I put that jelly on, I just sort of lavish it all over it. I love a lot of jelly on it. Well, God has lavished His love on us. He's spread it all over us. Remember, John's had seen God's love in action. This was not just something he was writing about. He had actually seen uh, God's, uh, Jesus' love in action. Remember, he, would been, he was there with him when they instituted the Lord's Supper, um, when uh, Jesus was washing the disciples' feet. He stood at the cross and watched Jesus die for all of our sins. John naturally wanted to please the one who loved him so much. This should be the desire of every one of us who have by faith received the Lord Jesus Christ, been forgiven of our sins, and we have eternal life. We've been born again to live a life that is pleasing to God, that others would see Jesus in us. Well, the question is, uh, how can we please God? Uh, who lived and who died for you and me. How can we do that? Be faithful. Be faithful to Him. Be committed to standing for the Lord Jesus Christ, for being a witness to Him, and also loving one another as Christ has loved us. You know, I think a lot of times you and I ought to evaluate ourselves, so to speak, and ask us the question, is the way I'm living, is it pleasing to God for everything that God has done for me? Am I pleasing Him with my life, with my thoughts, with my actions, with my words? You know, that's something we need to consider. You know, but secondly, 
John cherished the fact that he had a position just like you and I have a position. What is that position? As being a child of God. To being a child of God. That we should be called sons of God. What does that mean? We could just consider it a great privilege to be called God's children to His son or His daughter. It ought to be a great privilege to do that. Not everybody can have that privilege unless they've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. You know, we didn't earn it. We couldn't earn our salvation. Uh, this privileged position that we came into is because of God's love that He's bestowed upon us. The privilege of being sons and daughters of His when we believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. When we had faith in Jesus, when we brought our hearts to Jesus Christ and said, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sin. At that moment, you became a child of God. The privilege of sonship or daughtership is eternal. It will never change. It will never go away. It's something that you can actually count on throughout. John knew that if he, a simple fisherman, could be the Son of God, then salvation could be for anybody. Anybody can have salvation. Whoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no exemptions to that. Well, what does being a child of God do? What does it do for you? What should it cause you to want to do? Uh, live especially for Jesus in a world that doesn't care for you. You know, being a, a child of God will cause conflict in the world. Why? Because the world doesn't know Jesus Christ. And then for that reason, it doesn't know us, don't understand why we do the things we do. It's because of Christ. You see, every Christian needs to understand that we're going to be misunderstood and be prepared to be shunned, mistreated by the world. You can see it every day. Just as our Lord Jesus Christ was rejected by men, we too can count on it. Jesus said, if they hated me, they'll hate you also. The Lord was misunderstood. He was hated and He was rejected. Here, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday we'll celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. They hated Him so much that they crucified Him on the cross. But what they didn't know, because of the cross and His death, He would give eternal life to all who would believe in Him. Praise the Lord when the world doesn't accept you because you live a holy life, one dedicated to serving the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, now that we are children of God, you know, John was letting us know eternal life began the moment you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And he lives in anticipation. Anticipation of Christ's return. We'll be like him in verses 2 and 3. All of the revelations that we don't understand, all the revealings of Christ we don't understand, we will understand because we'll be like him. John knew the failures of this life. And he probably had some regrets like we all do. We all battle with sin. No one can deny it. Paul knew of this daily in his life. He didn't understand the things that he did that he didn't want to do. He struggled with doing what's right. But John anticipates a better day coming for us. And there is a better day coming for us when all of life's mysteries will be cleared up at Jesus' return. We'll be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, Paul wrote, and we'll receive 
our eternal bodies. Those of us who love Christ, we'll see Him as He really is. And we'll be like Him. Like John, I think all believers want to be like Jesus. Living a pure and a holy life before Him. And when we fail that way, that life, confess it to God who loves us and who will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, it was God's love that moved John to live a holy and a pure life. He knew he was a child of God. And he knew that Jesus would come back one day to receive him to himself. I hope and pray this little short devotional will move us to really try to live that holy and pure life that pleases God before a world that don't know Jesus. Maybe they'll see enough Jesus in us that they'll ask, what is your eternal hope? My hope is founded in Jesus Christ. May yours be as well. You know, until that day, may we keep loving Jesus, loving each other, just as His Word has commanded us to do. Let us pray. Father, we thank You for this opportunity to share a short part of Your Word. Lord, a way in which we can learn to live holy and pure lives. And my, my prayer is, Father, that every day that we live would be better than the day before for Your glory and for Your honor. Bless Your people, Father. Bless the reading of the Word to their heart. And I pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.